Hi guys, in today's video, we are going to define polymorphism. So if you are getting this question in interview, what is polymorphism or explain OOPS concept. So how to define polymorphism as a part of OOPS concept with real time examples. Okay, so I'll be covering what to be covered in an interview and what not to be covered while you are answering this question. Now before jumping into this video, I have a little announcement. I'll make this announcement and then without any interruption, we'll continue with this video. I promise. I have an exciting announcement for each one of you. Relevel has launched two new tests in the domain of business analyst role and data analyst role. They have some amazing company on board with package up to 22 LPA. So sign up on the platform today to check out all these companies like Cred, Upgrade, Razorpay, Yatra, etc. hiring from Relevel. You can even try out free sample paper to access your skills for the test. You just need 150 marks in the first phase to qualify for the second phase. After the second phase, a 700 plus score land you with interviews, job opportunities and some amazing Relevel swags. They guarantee packages of more than 4 LPA for non-tech role and 6 LPA for tech role. There is no age restrictions or experience limit for eligibility. If you are 18 plus, you can attempt the re-level test to get 50% hike for your next job in the best product-based company. Registration process is simple as any registration process. You just need to sign up, book a slot and yeah. Be ready for the test. All links are there in the description. Please go ahead and check it out. Now let's continue with this video. So the definition of polymorphism is morphism. Poly means many. Morphism means morph means form. Means multiple form. A single action can be performed in a multiple way or a different way. Like I'll give you a basic example. I am Amita Singh, I am a daughter, I am a sister, I am an employee, I am a YouTuber. So I need to perform different role but I am a single person, right? So what is polymorphism? We can perform a single action in different ways. The whole idea of polymorphism came to achieve flexibility. Now here is the question, how can we achieve polymorphism? So in any interview, you need to first define what is polymorphism, how you can achieve it, plus what is the advantages of polymorphism. That is, I have already taught flexibility. That's what you can add while you are answering to the interviewer. Three things, definition, why we need it and how we can achieve it. That's all. So let's talk about how we can achieve polymorphism. So polymorphism can be achieved by two ways. First is compile time polymorphism that is called method overloading. Second is runtime polymorphism that is also called method overriding. So let's check it out one by one. What is compile time polymorphism and what is runtime polymorphism? You don't need to explain this in an interview. You just need to tell the interviewer this is the two type. Let the interviewer ask you what is method overloading and met method overriding? You don't need to define it while you are answering in any interview. Now let's define what is overloading. So two methods are said to be overload if and only if both having the same name but different argument type. Now here you can see in this example, I have created a test class. In this test class, I have three method method one two three and parameters for this method if you see method one i'm not passing any argument in method two i'm passing int argument and in method three i'm passing argument double now if i'm creating an object of this class that is test t is equal to new test and and if i want to call this method then even if you don't pass the argument then this class, this program will automatically identify which method I'm trying to call and it will not throw any error. 
what i am saying in overloading if compiler is unable to find the method with exact match we won't get any compile time error immediately so what will happen first compiler promotes the argument to the next level and check whether the matched method is available or not if it is available then the method will be considered if it is not available then compiler promotes the argument once again to the next level this process will be continued until all the possible promotion still if the method matched method is not available then we will get compile time error and this process is called automatic promotion in overloading so here you can see i am trying to call first method and i am not passing any argument then it will give me the result it will check whether there is a method with no argument if it is matching it will be giving me the result the second is <laughs> i am passing 10 then it will again go to the test and it will see whether the argument is matching to the method or not in the first time it is not matching it will pass it to the next one if second one is also not matching it will pass to the third one if the third one is matching it will give me the result so that's how it's called an automatic promotion in overloading now let's talk about overriding now what is overriding in overriding method whatever the parent has by default available to the child through inheritance so the parent class method which is overridden is called overridden method and the child class method which is overriding is called overriding method here you can see in example i have declared a class parent class and i am declaring one method over here and i am extending the parent class in the child class means i am inheriting it and i am calling the same method in the child class means i am overriding the method so which is overridden method the parent class is an overridden method and overriding method is available in the child class so few basics rule of overriding method overriding is in overriding methods name and argument must be same number two private method are not visible in the child class hence overriding concept is not applicable for the private method but based on own requirement we can declare the same parent class private method in the child class also but it is not overriding means we cannot override private method and point to remember while overriding we cannot reduce the scope of access modifier means suppose the parent class is public you cannot extend and you cannot make the method protected in the child class if you want to go into more detail then i'll provide you the reference you can go through it let's talk about why do we need it so having an overloading concept in java reduces complexity of the program in c languages we can't take two method with the same name and different types if there is a ch change in the argument type compulsory we should go to the new method name uh, flexibility can be achieved that's why we use polymorphism